Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of Back to Basics. I know you guys are all so surprised because we disappeared <laughs> for forever, but that's what happens when everybody's children get sick in rapid succession is that we lose the complete ability to schedule anything. So we unintentionally took a break, but guess what? We're back and we brought a friend. So yay, we're here. Yeah. Back Joining in me force. as usual is the, the one, the only, the magnificent, that you can't replace her if you tried, Courtney Fraley. Howdy. And also joining us is the attempt anyway, Tim. Hey. I'm kidding. God. You don't have to be that transparent about it. Am I that bad? <laughs> I, I, I'm joking. It's just a fun play on words. You know I can't resist that shit. <laughs> we are never going to be able to replace Courtney because much like me, she's impossible to get rid of, which I think is a spiritual gift because I am also <laughs> impossible to get rid of. Like spiritual cockroaches, these two. Damn right. <laughs> Y'all really know how to lift somebody up with the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I, I say shit like that, but I also acknowledge that I fall into the exact same category. So you know what? We're all in this together. We are a nest of spiritual cockroaches here at Unfinished Community and happy for it. I identify as a Twinkie, so. No, <laughs> that's... No, what yeah, I, that, I didn't go away. Exactly, thought this that is supposedly why you should watch survive. the YouTube show. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. yeah, for those of you following on the podcast, the facial expressions from <laughs> that line alone are worth the YouTube subscription. I promise. Uh, it's so free. before we get too far it. afield. Before we get too far afield, let's talk about the actual damn Bible here for a minute because uh, that's okay. what we've not been doing for a while, and that's kind of what we need to be doing so we are getting back into genesis go figure it's where we've been since we started this show 45 years ago um and we we are now up all the way to chapter 39 now in our last episode we did i believe three parts on the previous chapter which was pretty much just tamar being a badass and god just murdering anybody who ran full-fledged over her uh issues of consent um, so, you know, great. God killed um, her first wife because reasons, killed her first wife, first husband because reasons, second husband because no, not masturbation, killed him because he was doing rape by fraud, and then just started leaving it up to her to put matters into her own hands, which she did by grabbing him tight and yanking until she got what she needed. So, you know, I see Tim got that. Thank you very much. Um mm -hmm. So now we are doing exactly what you would expect from the Bible, which is not talking about Tamar ever again and going back to Joseph. So we are starting chapter 39 with the story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife, because, hey, when it comes to the people of God, it's always somebody and somebody else's wife. So let's go ahead and get on this. And I'm going to go ahead and close my email so it doesn't beep like that again. Uh, Tim, you're going to read for us chapter 39 today? Yes. Um, and for some reason, my Bible gateway won't pull up, so I've got the Bible app, but it is still NRSVUE. It may just be a slightly different version. Well, if it's NRSVUE, it's the same version, so we'll keep it. Yeah. Well, I don't know if maybe it was edited at a different time. So now Joseph was taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man. He was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him. He made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and with him there he had no concern for anything but the food that he ate. Now Joseph was handsome and good-looking, and after a time his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, with me here, my master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything that he has in my hand. He is not greater in the house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except yourself, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And although she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not consent to lie beside her or to be with her. 
One day, however, when he went into the house to do his work, and while no one else was in the house, she caught hold of his garment saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and had fled outside, she called out to the members of her household and said to them, see, my husband has brought among us a Hebrew to insult us. He came in to, he came into me to lie with me. And I cried out with a loud voice. And when he heard me raise my voice and cry out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. Then she kept his garment by her until his master came home. And she told him the same story, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you have brought among us came into me to insult me. But as soon as I raised my voice and cried out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. When his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, saying, This is the way your servant treated me, he became enraged. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. He remained there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love. He gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. The chief jailer committed to Joseph's care all the prisoners who were in the prison, and whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The chief jailer paid no heed to anything that was in Joseph's care, because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Okay, so shit happens um i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna start by highlighting before we get to the the questions which i'm sure you have many um i'm gonna highlight a couple of translational issues here that i think are kind of funny if nothing else <laughs> um there's nothing i think because as usual i am reading the and again not paid for the endorsement uh robert alter's translation here with all of his fun notes um, although, you know, Mr. Alter, if you do want to pay me for constantly stuffing for your work, please, you know, I'm, I'm totally game for that. Uh, happy to do an ad for you. Um, but no, um, some of the translational notes in here, like there's nothing really functionally different between what we just read in the NRS VUE and what's like in the actual Hebrew and kind of what's in Alter's translation here. However, what we are missing is some of the emphatics of language. Uh, in a lot of the English translations, pretty much everything is kind of rounded and softed by what we like to call the, the biblical tone here. But I'm going to go ahead and kick it back to verse 7 here. And um, in verse 7, we have in the NRSV, and again, in Alter's translation as well, uh, and after a time, his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph, and she said, lie with me. Now, that is a legitimate English translation of the Hebrew. I'm not going to go down on it. It's the same in altars as it is in the NRSV UV. Not, However, you're not going to go down on it. Is that really how you phrase that? Maybe. Anyway, Neither Joseph, so it's fine. Well, that's kind of <laughs> kind of hinting at what I'm going to be getting at here. Um, is in his notes on this verse, he, he right away says the extraordinary bluntness of this sexual imperative, two words in the Hebrew, makes it one of the most striking instances of, rev of revelatory initial dialogue in the Bible. So modernly, if we were to do the Eugene Peterson bit and make our own version of the message, we could just as easily say, and it happened after these things, that his master's wife raised her eyes to Joseph and said, fuck me. <laughs> It is extremely that level of blunt. Um, and there is dialogic interplay as we go throughout where Potiphar's wife changes her phraseology regularly to suggest she's trying to manipulate. So we get back into uh, to verse 10. Um, uh, and, so, and so she spoke to Joseph day after day and he would not listen to her to lie by her to be with her suggesting now that she's switched to saying oh well you can just come lay next to me and whatever happens happens like she's she's changed her phraseology and her approach from the blunt to the less blunt and as we go on into her relaying this to her husband later on uh and that's verse 14 i believe um, this is this is sexual harassment and it's not okay kids yeah definitely Absolutely. coming from the woman either no <laughs> nope <laughs> doesn't still matter not okay. what your gender is yeah. You don't do this to someone. This and we no means yeah, and we get to verse 14 here where she's explaining it to her husband. Um, See, my husband has brought among us a Hebrew to insult us. He came, he came into me to lie with me. Like that in English, that is an awkward as fuck compound verb here. And in Hebrew, it obviously actually works. Uh, but what it, she's doing here is she's using came in to me in a way to suggest that 
you could take it either way. He either he came into the room to be with me. Uh, you, you, but I, I've awkwardly phrased it that way. But you could mean it that way. But really, you're going to assume that I meant that he literally penetrated me. Like, so it's leaving open room for a double meaning. So she's not technically lying. Um, but that she, really there, works in the original language. Yep. That's part of the reason why it's so awkwardly phrased in English is that kind of combination uh, verb structure it's works actually, a lot better in Hebrew. Like you, mm -hmm. you can create kind of implied statuses in that way in Hebrew in a way that you can't in English. And when we're translating it in English, you can't do shit but translate it. <laughs> what, what the hell else are you going to do, right? Um, so even like even in Alter's actual translation, which again, Alter's whole point is to make something that is poetic and readable and really reflects the rhythm of the ancient Hebrew. The phrase still reads, he came in to me to lie with me. Like it's still that awkward kind of compound verb because there isn't, it just flat out doesn't exist an English way to construct that, that really mirrors what the Hebrew is doing there. Um, although I will say in the, the sentence just before it, uh, there is something that's not carried over into the NRSVUE. Where she says, in the NRSVE, she says, see, my husband has brought among us a Hebrew to insult us. Uh, but Alter's translation says, see, he has brought us a Hebrew man to play with us. Which is very different. Um, and Sounds like what it, she's trying to get what? him to do. Well, it reflects the kind of condescending way she's speaking and kind of the uh, contemptuous way she's she's referring to him. So she's not referring to him by name. She's referring to him as the Hebrew man. Um, and play has like in the way it's used here according to alter it can mean sexual dalliance it can mean mockery it can mean any number of things it could also mean like to insult by mocking um but it is like a lot of the words she's using with her husband a choice that is much broader and open to a wider degree of interpretation so like the english here is fixating on the meaning of insult but Potiphar's wife left a lot of wiggle room in what she was saying on the official record here. And that's that's something that is being communicated in the Hebrew that doesn't really carry over in the English, is that she's hyper blunt with, with Joseph. Like, I want you to take your penis and put it exactly where you think it should go. Uh, and on the <laughs> other hand, with her husband, she's like, oh, he did a thing in a place that may or may not have been moist for reasons that may or may not have been of his own benefit. Like, it's a combination yeah. of legalese and weird sexual innuendo that may or may not mean what, you know, Potiphar's husband or Potiphar, sorry, Potiphar's wife, her husband, Potiphar. God, this is getting confusing. It may so do I do I have this right that it could have meant it, like between anywhere between one of two things. He invaded my space and uh, said inappropriate things. Or he raped me. Well, that's like that's. That's the thing. The way it's stated, like the the common meaning of what's being expressed is he raped me. But it's phrased in such a way that if she were pressed on it, she could say, oh, I didn't actually mean that. Mm -hmm. uh, trusting that her husband would not press her on that because, you know, what what husband would like if you say something There's like a that word for that woman that's not said in polite company. Holy shit. Hell, you think this yeah, is we polite don't say company. That You're on YouTube. Come on. <laughs> so that's that's the translational gist of it that i want to get out there is that there is a bit a bit more that she's doing linguistically that doesn't carry into the into the english so that said uh what do y'all want to pick at with this bad boy or bad uh, girl is the case maybe the bible doing bible things and repeating itself multiple times there you Man. go they really want to get across the fact that he was over everything that potiphar had Mm -hmm. <laughs> about four or five different times yeah and you know like we're stressing joseph's faithfulness here um and the trust that potiphar has placed with him like this emphasis here and i i will say this until the sun dies in the sky but hebrew emphasizes via rep repetition Mm -hmm. So we don't have exclamation points in Hebrew by saying it again in 10 different ways. That's how you convey emphasis in this particular ancient language. So, yeah, it's being repetitive, but it's being repetitive because that's what an exclamation mark looks like in Hebrew. Um, mm. I think it's interesting, though, you talk about repeating themes um, that we are once again getting the same theme that we got in the last chapter about violations of consent being something that pisses God off. Mm -hmm. But we have the 
inverse here. In the last chapter, God was being pissed because a, a because of the occurrence of an actual rape. Um, and that was the whole Onan story. Is Onan got, got his ass struck dead because he committed rape by fraud. Now over here, we've got a false accusation happening. And both of these are being put up as examples of something bad happening, something that is not in the will of God. And what they both boil down to is violations of consent. Anyway, that's the repeating theme I like to stick on. So do continue and you know keep me from ranting more. I mean, that's the other thing is it is interesting to see the other side. Hmm. Sorry, Courtney, you were going to say? No, I was just saying I thought it was a rant worth making. Mm -hmm. I uh, agree. This is why I YouTube with you guys. You like it when I rant, usually. <laughs> So what else you got? What else caught your attention out of this whole deal? Um, what else did I run across? I feel like you covered a lot of it. Yeah. As um, I said, the next few chapters in the Joseph story, they're pretty straightforward. Like there's not a lot of nuance or depth really happening here. It's just bam, 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 bam. Here's your moral lesson. Here's the next story going on. It's going to get weirder from here, I'll admit, but it's still going to be pretty straightforward. Here's your like rhyming story beats part where now the chief jailer trusts him exactly the same way that Potiphar did. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is one of those cases where the rhyming story beats also kind of echoes something that's very true with life. If you are a particular type of person, in this case, a faithful person, like wherever you're put, that faithfulness will bloom in one way or another. It may take more time in different soil, but Joseph is being presented here as a truly faithful, trustworthy person. So you stick him in the Pharaoh's household and he will prosper in that environment and be earned and worthy of trust. But if you strike his ass down and throw him in prison, the same thing will happen. Because you cannot change the nature of a person, particularly a person whom God is with. Um, so, you know, and I've, I've seen that in the lives of many people in our own congregation, including some people who happen to be on this podcast, <laughs> that no matter where you put them in life, they still grow into the same sort of wonderful, lovable, awesome person that they are. You can't change that. That, that. that is an unchangeable reality. And that's the same thing that's happening with, you know, Big and Cuddly Joseph here. The look of incredulity coming from the other video in, in, uh, in, in this trio here was fantastic, by the way. But uh, may I stick out my head from the uh, evangelical upbringing to bring something up that you covered? Ah, yes. <laughs> uh, so the fun part of all of this is what you just covered is you put someone in certain situations, they're always going to be faithful. Uh, the part that the evangelical church leaves out is bad shit still happens to good people. Just because bad shit happens does not mean that you are a bad person. Yeah, being a servant of God does not protect you from the evil actions of other people, which, oh God, do I know that one pretty well. Like That's been the reigning theme of my life for the last five years. But it also doesn't mean that like you're going to be blessed in a worldly or understandable way. Like This right here, much like the entire fucking book of Job, is a denunciation of the divine slot machine theory of God. <laughs> You can see it. Did you say job? Job, Job, either way. It, you know? <laughs> I can't argue with the spelling. Like, Yeah, it's J-O-B. Like, Technically, the Hebrew pronunciation is closer to Job, but it's not going to be English. Steve. Hmm? <laughs> it's pronounced Steve. It's pronounced <laughs> Billy Bob. Now deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I mean, it's, if, you, if you consider that Job was kind of like a down home farmer who uh, had, you know, a whole lot of everything taken from him and shit happened, like extra religious, kind of lived up in the hill country farming a little bit, like Billy Bob Feels might like not be idiot. inaccurate. Yeah. But I digress. Uh, yeah, we sorry. all digress. That's the whole point <laughs> of this show. Haven't you noticed? Do we? <laughs> but no, like it. I withhold it's my own studies of Job, but that's <laughs> Oh, don't worry. We'll get to it. By the time we're in our 60s, we'll have got to Job, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just insane of how much gets glossed over in the evangelical uh, mm. go-to of, oh, if you're faithful, things will go well for you. It's like, that's not what this says. It says if you're faithful, even when bad shit happens, which it's going to, you have the framework 
to say, all right, bad shit happened. I'm going to continue being who I am, who I know I'm supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to just see where the cards lie. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a, that's like, this is a good lesson to take away is that being a good person does not protect you from the shit that's going to happen in life. Shit, as mm-hmm. they say, happens. So, I mean, anything else we want to get at, or or do we want to call this as red for our first episode for for our return to form? I'm good with it. Yeah, I'm I'm good. Uh, you got a kitty back there, Tim. Oh, I have two of them running around me incessantly. <laughs> <laughs> they know you're trying to do something. Exactly. Uh huh. Thing they're not jumping up on your shoulders. No, they've just been running across the couch. All right. So then before we get distracted by kitty cats, let's let's go ahead and call it for today. Um, uh, so this is going to air on this for, for us when we're recording this this coming Monday, which means our regular worship service will have just happened um, by the time you're seeing this. So uh, if you didn't catch it, it should be still in our live recordings here on the YouTube channel. So go check that out. Um, I'll probably have the sermon posted by this point anyway, because I'm also using that for some graduate work. So check that out too, if you like. Um, be part of our community because we like you and want to talk to you. Um, we we actually are a physical community here in Japan. There's not many of us here actually in the country, but the majority of our community is online, on Discord, and all around the world. So for example, Tim here is in... Indiana. And Courtney is in... Michigan. And I am in Japan. And that sounds about right for our community. Um, (laughs) Truth be told, Courtney and Tim are probably the two closest together folk in our community at this point, just about. Honestly, yeah. You know, so if you are looking for a church community uh, that isn't, you know, normal. uh, Hi, welcome aboard. (laughs) You're you're basically a member already. Uh, Links to everything are down below. Uh, Our website is in the in the description and that's got the links to just and everything uh you can get onto our discord from there and unlike some folk we don't like make you go through a patreon or other bullshit to access it just click the link and you're there we like to see you there and come talk to us we're having conversations about all this shit everywhere every when and uh my discord's been firing off all morning so you know come join us it's fun uh also uh i am required by law to request that courtney fraley make the following declaration and request of you all like share and subscribe woohoo indeed please do those things you would be surprised honestly how much like one share of this video on like facebook or some shit like even one of those really helps us get some visibility on this stuff Mm -hmm. so like every time you share this video an angel gets its wings and i'm pretty sure that's catholic (laughs) theology if not evangelical but what the hell um you know we'll we'll go with it it may not be a protestant theology but you know what i'm gonna borrow it for this one (laughs) That being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and we will see you on the next episode of Back to Basics, which will be in a week for you and in about 30 seconds for us. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.